Hello and welcome back to Real Estate Agent School. In this video, I'm going to give you the number one reason why real estate agents are not succeeding when knocking doors. We're actually going to listen to a live recording from one of my students within my program who is knocking doors and giving up too soon, which is a totally common mistake. We're going to go through the recording. We're going to go over what she could have done differently and how you too can succeed when knocking doors. If you're new to my channel, my name is Cameron Ure. I am a real estate agent. I knock doors. I teach agents how to knock doors and I teach agents how to go from a brand new agent, a struggling agent to a top producer. In this video, we're going to talk about the number one mistake that agents are making, which is giving up too soon. It is totally common and it is really hard to get over. If you're knocking doors for the first time and struggling to continue to ask questions, this video is going to be for you. When it comes to knocking doors, you want to ask as many questions as possible. I usually recommend for every single comment that one seller makes, you need to have five questions that you can ask off of that one comment. So if somebody says, oh, we're not thinking of selling right now, you want to be able to ask five other questions to take a deeper dive into this person's objection to truly find out why they are not wanting to sell right now and how you can help them further the conversation and actually educate them on why it may make sense moving sooner and how you can help them. When it comes to having conversations with homeowners at the doorstep, it is 100% nerve wracking. Don't get me wrong, when you don't know what to say, when you're struggling to come up with that next question, or you're struggling to hear the person who's actually talking, but inside your head, you're thinking, shoot, I have no idea what to say. I went through this, I feel your pain, I know how it is. The number one tip I am going to give you is do exactly what my student does that is record yourself if you are knocking doors you must be recording yourself listen to yourself back and do homework on your own recordings what i mean by this is you need to actually go back through your recording after you're done knocking doors and do a full analysis on what you said listen to the recording and hit pause when you realize that you were stumped when you threw out a question that was just to keep the conversation alive but was not taking the conversation really anywhere so you're going to hit pause and then you're going to write on a piece of paper five different questions that you could have asked this is extremely important because one it makes your brain think of things that would be more beneficial questions and more helpful to get this person further along in the process of considering to move as well as just helping them see if it would make sense so when they say something hit pause write five questions down that would make more sense to ask and then continue on listen to the full recording and by the end of this you will have a list of questions that you can then study memorize and use next time you are on the doors so with this being said we are going to review my students live recording right now in this video and critique it and see how she could have taken this conversation further what other questions she could have asked and how she could have potentially got this deal by pushing a little bit more So to dive into this right off the bat, we need to add an icebreaker. The most important aspect of when you knock on somebody's door is getting them to understand why you're there, but also getting them thinking. You can hear in this prospect's voice that he is timid, kind of like skeptical and like, yeah, whatever. What we want to do is we want to ask a question prior to asking if they have considered selling their home. This could be, have you seen me in the neighborhood? Have you gotten my postcard? Have the neighbors told you I'd be coming by? It could be whatever you want. But by asking this question, it makes the prospect break their walls down, think about what you're asking them and be ready for the next question. So when my student goes into the next question of, hey, we have a lot of buyers looking in this neighborhood, have you considered selling your house? The prospect will then be more prepared for the answer. I think about it every day. <laughs> my wife, no. <laughs> have you guys lived here quite a while? Since, let's see, 1994. Wow, that is a while. Yeah. Awesome. Yep, you have, we got married, we bought this place. You plan to live here forever, do you think? Or? Okay, so my student is asking fantastic questions, but in the wrong order. So when this client says, 
no, we're not thinking about selling or, well, he pretty much says, I want to sell, but my wife doesn't. My student asks a different question instead of asking, okay, is this your wife's forever home you think? Obviously in the later in the conversation, she ends up asking this, but the order to the way you ask questions is extremely important. By asking if it is the wife's forever home, the husband obviously wants to sell, not the wife. He'll then be able to say, yes, for sure, which is later in the conversation, which we'll hear. But the fact that you ask this in the beginning allows you to pinpoint the problem of why these people are not moving. If it's the wife that doesn't want to make the move, we need to understand why that is the case. Why is this the wife's forever home? Why does she not want to move? What is holding her back from moving? And if she were to move, what would have to happen for that to actually come to fruition? So by reordering your questions, you're going to have far more success. Do you plan to live here forever, do you think? Or? In her case, yes. If me, no. No. <laughs> where would you want to move to? I would like to move out to the country where I got some hunting woods. And if I can't find that, then someplace else so I can fly my hot air to it. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, I don't see her moving any time in the next hundred years. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. I would like to, but no. All right, well, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the very, very important lesson here is to understand that it's okay to not know what to say. Objections are hard and it is painful to knock on doors. Anybody that can actually go out knock on doors and do the work, I commend you tenfold. You will get business even just by having conversations. But the fact of the matter is there was so much more meat on the bone for this conversation to continue the conversation. So I'm gonna give you the next part of this conversation in an imaginary scenario of what this could have looked like and what conversational questions you should have asked. So when this homeowner says, no, this is her forever home, I would love to move into the country, fly my hot air balloon, all super cool stuff, but this guy is wanting to move. He's already checked the box, he's ready to go. The wife is not. So we need to determine, like I said earlier, what her pain points are. And so obviously if you can't talk to the wife in person right then and there, you wanna get ammunition from the husband to use for the wife in the future. So what you can do with this is by asking, okay, is there anything that your wife would change about your current house? This question is phenomenal. If you ask this question, he's going to open up about everything that she doesn't like that she has complained about. There is not a single person on this planet that has perfectly loved every single home they have lived in. They always want something nicer. They always want something less maintenance. They always want something potentially smaller so they don't have to clean as much. The list could go on forever. There's always something. So if you can find this stuff out, you can then start to dive into how you can potentially even team up with the husband to get the wife to make the move. Obviously, like I always say, we are not trying to sell people on moving if it does not make their life better financially, emotionally, whatever. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not trying to scam people into moving their house. I'm actually just trying to bless people's lives with our education, with the opportunities we can bring and with the massive financial gain that they can sometimes see by moving sooner. So when it comes down to actually furthering the conversation with the wife, it's gonna be challenging because one, you need to get the wife at the door. So if you can ask the blunt, honest question of, well, hey, is your wife home? I'd love to ask her why she isn't thinking about moving. Or is there a time when you guys are both home? I'd love to come over and run through a game plan of what it could look like if you were to move sooner. Obviously, this question is only used once you've built rapport with the husband, kind of teamed up and found out really what the wife would need to make that move and seeing if it would actually financially benefit them. But the premise of this video is to not give up. I promise if you continue to push, continue to ask questions and do your homework with your recordings, you will get better at door knocking. So if you want help learning how to knock doors to grow your business, shoot me a message and I will show you what Real Estate Agent School can provide to you. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Check this video out right here if you wanna know my door knocking scripts that are extremely powerful and I'll talk to you soon.